because the Christians began to celebrate Sunday as the Lord's Day. This wasn't done by Pope nobody. And when the day of Pentecost, and the word Pentecost means 50, or 50th, hello, and the Lord told us how to get to the 50th day. He said, number seven Sabbaths. Seven times seven is 49. But he said, the morrow after the Sabbath. That's the day that's going to be the high holy day. So the Holy Ghost did not come on the 49th day. It didn't come on the seventh Sabbath. But it came on the day after the Sabbath, which had to be the first day of the week. Hello, y'all. So if Jesus came out of the grave first day of the week, if the Holy Ghost came from heaven first day of the week, you're going backwards when you get all wrapped up on the Sabbath. We'll move on from here. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had an infirm spirit. Spirit of infirmity. That word just kind of dissected. Infirm, not firm. Her strength was not there. She, she was not up to par. She was suffering from a spirit of infirmity. It had to do with something in her spinal. Because she couldn't even stand up straight. This condition had existed 18 years. I want you to know that whatever is here is written for our learning. It does not matter how long your situation has persisted. If I go to John chapter 5, where Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda, where there were five porches, where there was a great multitude of people. It looked like Jesus kept on walking until he found somebody who had been there a long time. He didn't even want to deal with anybody who had just taken ill five days ago or even two or three years ago. But when he found the man who had been in that shape 38 years, that was the thing that attracted him. Was how long the man had been suffering. What drew him to this woman. She probably was not the only one in the synagogue that day. That had some infirmity or some disease. But her condition had persisted. For 18 years. I want to tell you it doesn't matter how long you've been in it. God's got the power to get you out of it. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter how long. Glory to God. Sometimes when you struggle with the same thing for a long enough time, not only do others give up on you, you give up on yourself. And if you don't watch it, you'll give up on God. But look at how it says. She had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and the word says she was bowed together. That word bowed together meant bent over. And I've often said that bowed together would simply imply that her feet were almost down, I mean her head was almost down where her feet should be. She was like a you turned upside down. Hallelujah. Situations in this world can mess you up. I mean, mess you up so bad. Instead of being right side up, you're upside down. 
inside out. But God knows how to put you inside in and right side up. <laughs> but listen at the last word, the last line in verse 11. It says she had a spirit of infirmity. She had had it for 18 years. She was bowed together. And here's the pitiful part. And could in no wise lift up herself. Oh, I know we live in a world now when everybody talks about that positive self-image. And what you've got to do and take control of your life. And you've got to do this and you've got to do that. But this woman, no matter how she tried. No matter what positive thoughts she had. No matter how she confessed the positive and rejected the negative. She could not lift herself up. I want you to know there are some situations you get into that it doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself, I'm not going to do this anymore. It doesn't matter how you say that I'm coming out of this. Some situations you can get in and it doesn't matter what you do. You cannot lift your own self up. So many situations of life like it was with Peter. Oh, you remember Jesus had sent his disciples and told them, you know, go on to the other side. I'll stay behind and send away the multitude. And they got out there and the storm rose. And they wondered, when is Jesus going to get here? How is he going to get here? Told us to go to the other side. And we in the boat and the boat about to sink. And all of a sudden they look and here he is walking on the water. Somebody says, a spirit. Jesus said, no, mm -mm, it is I. Peter said, well, Lord, if it's really you, let me come to you on the water. Jesus spread his word out like a magic carpet on the ocean saying, come. Peter stepped out of the boat on the word, had his face focused on Jesus. Walking, But all of a sudden he began to sing. And when he started to sing, he didn't wait till he went under. When he first recognized the water was coming up over his ankles and hitting around his knees, beginning to sing, he cried, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. I can't save myself. I need you to save me. You can say what you want to. That's the very principle upon which the church, the body of Christ, is built. Man by nature is a sinner. I don't care who your parents are. I don't care how good you think you are. We come into this world, and as the psalmist said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We came into this world as sinners because of the original sin of Adam. Hallelujah. And because we are sinners, we need a Savior. And we can't save ourselves. Hallelujah. I don't care no amount of good works. You can't save yourself. The only way that we can be saved is through the precious shed blood of Jesus Christ. Not only does it take his blood to save us. It takes his power to sustain us. And you're going to find some instances in life that I don't care how tough you think you are. You're going to run into some situations when you're going to have to throw up your hands. And you're going to have to tell him, Lord, save me. Oh, I don't mean save you again from being a sinner. But save me from the situation I'm in. Save me from my present distress. Hallelujah. Somebody in here, I, I, I hear it in your spirit. Glory to God. Yes, you're saved. 
Yeah, you're doing your best to live for God, but you are presently in distress. You're in a situation now. Yeah, you said stressed out, in distress, whatever the thing is, but you can't get out of it yourself. But the old folk recognize when I get into it and can't get myself out, that's when they say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. You get into stuff, I don't care how educated you are, your degrees won't get you out. You can get into stuff, I don't care how much money you got, your money won't get you out. You can get into it and I don't care how positive you are, your positive mentality won't get you out. And when nothing else will help, you got to learn, Lord, you are my only hope. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just ought to give him a praise right about now. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. This woman, let me hurry and get through with this. The Bible said she could in no wise lift up herself. Mm. But when I get to verse 12, and when Jesus saw her. <laughs> I, I just wish you'd turn to somebody and tell him. He's looking at you right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, he sees your situation. She couldn't lift herself up. But Jesus saw her. Yes, he sees you. Midnight hour, two in the morning, three a.m. Tipping quietly into the bathroom, shutting the door, cause you don't want anybody in the house to wake up and hear you crying. But I want you to know he sees whatever you are going through. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Mm. My, 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 that, 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 that's powerful. He saw, and he knew she couldn't lift herself up. But even though she had to come head down, he called her. My God, you may be down and out, but I hear him calling. Come on with your disappointment. Come on with your broken heart. Come on with your sickness. Come on with your embarrassment. Come on. You got to learn when he calls you come. I heard the voice of Jesus saying what? Come unto me and rest. Lie down thy weary one. Lie down thy head upon my breast. And when I heard it I came to Jesus. Just like I was. Weary, wounded, and sad. You don't have to fix up. Just go like you are. Always running into folk. Come on, I'm coming down to the church, but I, I got to get some stuff straight. Honey, you can't lift yourself up. You can't straighten yourself out. If you could straighten it out, you wouldn't even need the church. You wouldn't even need God if you could do it by yourself. But since you can't help yourself, you got to come on like you are. Just as I am without one clue. But that thy blood was shed for me. That thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. Let me finish this. Jesus saw her. 
he called her to him and he said unto her now look the woman have tried everything in her power but she couldn't lift herself up but when Jesus called her and when she made her effort to come to him he didn't say anything but woman thou art loose from your infirmity you're set free in other words all he gave her was a word We wonder, oh my God, when is the Lord going to really show me his power? When is he going to do what I need him to do? He gave our word. And in the word was power to straighten up. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you whatever you need tonight. Where is it? You don't need to go to the psychic. It's all in the word. Let me hurry up and get through with this. Woman, thou loose from thine infirmities. And then what did he do? He laid his hands on her. And it didn't take all night. Didn't take until the next Sabbath day. It did not take. Until the changing of the season. But all of a sudden. Can I hear somebody say immediately. And I think the word immediate means instantly. Quickly. Right away. Without delay. Immediately. She was made. Straight. Her problem was she was bent over and couldn't straighten up. But when Jesus told her a word and laid his hands on her, immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I need to cut off. I don't even like to think about the ruling. The ruler of the synagogue became indignant. Uh, his stated reason was because Jesus had healed on Sabbath day. I think that was his stated reason. But I don't think that was his real reason. I believe the real reason he got upset is because he was the ruler of the synagogue. In other words, he, he's the pastor of the neighborhood church. And folk been coming every Sabbath and had nobody ever got healed. <laughs> and here comes a visiting evangelist. <laughs> a native of Nazareth. But was now living in Capernaum. And he came in and teach, taught one message. And while he was teaching. He stopped and called out this sister. And I think that the ruler was embarrassed. You may not know it. But a whole lot of folk getting embarrassed today. There are a lot of churches now where. Folk teach ain't no such thing as filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. And every, every church now, don't matter how the preacher say it, ain't happening. You got somebody in there that's talking in tongues. <laughs> the Holy Ghost has made an invasion. Started back around 56 and an Episcopal church in Van Nuys, California. Priest got up and he was doing his thing and all of a sudden he went off in tongues. Moved on into the Catholic church and into the Methodist church and into the Baptist church. Every church organized now. Anybody who tries to teach that thing, they're not doing anything but self-destructing. 
because the Holy Ghost has made an invasion. And wherever the power of the Holy Ghost is, there are the gifts. And healing is one of the gifts. You all don't hear what I'm saying. The ruler got upset. And since he couldn't discuss the source of power in Jesus and the lack of power in himself, all he could talk about, hey, man, what you doing? Don't you know this is the Sabbath day? Listen to how foolish it sounds. The rule of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed. Now here's somebody with infirm spirit, 18 years. This woman just glad to be free. And you can say what you want to anybody. I don't care what the condition is. You don't care what day it is. You don't care what church is in. You don't care if it's under the tent or on the corner. You don't care if it's in the house or in the grocery store. If the devil have had you bound for 18 years. You just want to be free. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free. When my Savior found me and put his arms around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. Oh, this man complaining and Jesus rebuked him right there. Verse 15, the Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite. You up here talking about my healing being work on the Sabbath day and it's improper. There's not a one in this synagogue that on the Sabbath day you don't lose your ox or your ass, your donkey from the stall and lead him away to the water. That's work. But on the Sabbath day you still know your ox needs some water. You still know your donkey needs some water. So even on the Sabbath day, you break it in order to bring relief to one of your animals. Now look at this woman. Hallelujah. This woman is a daughter of Abraham. You're going to complain because I brought her some water? Some healing water? You're going to complain? Satan had bound her for these 18 years. And don't you know there's nothing wrong with her being delivered? Even though it is on the Sabbath day. And verse 17, and I'm finishing, when he had said these things, all his adversaries were shamed. Sometimes God's word will shame us out of our foolishness. But don't continue in the foolishness when God begins to rebuke you for wrong thinking. To bring you into harmony with his word. Thank God for the rebuke. And go ahead on and enjoy the glory that he has prepared for you. Elders, come on down. Hallelujah. Y'all know when I get into the word, it's just kind of difficult for me. Hallelujah. I want you all, if you would, to form a corridor down here as we do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, tonight, I thank you for your people that are present in this place. Somebody that needs a healing miracle. Somebody that needs a touch from the master's hand. I pray, oh God, that everyone that will pass through these elders tonight, that as we lay hands, that even as you laid hands on the woman whom we talked about tonight, 
Let every believer, every one with faith tonight know that they are loosed from their infirmity, from every sickness, every illness, every disease, and every infirmity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come on, begin to praise him. Begin to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Now you're going to have to come in from left to right. Come in from this side here. And wherever you are, you're going to have to walk around and come in past that end of the ministers. And uh, don't wait on anybody. All right.
Bless the Lord on this evening. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's all right to praise Him. If you've been touched, just go ahead and praise Him. Go ahead and praise Him for the touch. Thank you, Lord.
we cut it off. If you've been really touched, you better praise him like you've been loose. Because I'm sure if that woman that was here that was bound for 18 years, she'd be out here praising him with everything that's within her. Now praise him like you've been touched. to tell you tonight that you are loose from the shackles of sin and if you are lost in your sins I want to give you this blessed opportunity to meet the Jesus Christ that Bishop Patterson just preached about the Bible said what said it but the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and thy heart which is the word of faith which Bishop Patterson just preached for thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're lost in your sins, come here now. The door of the church is open. If you're a backslider, and you once had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is your time to be loosed and to get your business straight with God. Come here, backslider. Come back home. The Lord says that He's married to the backslider. 
If you return unto him, he'll return unto you. Come on home, backslap. Don't die in your sins. God bless you, young lady. If you want to be saved, come here now. If you're already saved, and you know this is the place where God wants you to be, that you have been tremendously blessed by the preached word here, and you want to make this your church home, now is your time to come and be become a member of this church. Come on. I have a powerful word like that and anointing in this place. I shouldn't have to beg you. You know if you're lost in your sins. You know if you're a backslider. You know if you're already saved, the Lord has been speaking to you about this place. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come quickly. God bless you, young lady. Come praise him. Come praise him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. God is yet in the saving business. Not only is he in the healing business, but he's yet in the saving business. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Buckley Bishop. Glory to God. Listen, I'm just going to shake hands with each one of you. You're going to go with Elder Steve Smith, and he's going to. And, and Elder Buckley. Bless you. I want you to go. Elder Buckley and Elder Smith. God bless you. God bless you. They're going to minister to you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we thank God for a powerful, powerful Holy Ghost field service. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This time, I'm going to ask the deacons if they would come, make available unto us the offertory envelopes that we may give of our tithe and our offerings on this evening. And while the deacons and ushers are making the envelopes available, I have a few announcements for your hearing on the sick list in Methodist Central.